Hello everyone and welcome back. It's so good to see you once again. So this is the part 2 for the Ansible series for 2021 and I hope you liked the first part and if you haven't seen that then I would request you to please watch that as well. In today's session we will do some interesting stuff in our journey towards automation with Ansible. I know the last episode was all about the background and mostly theoretical but in this session there is a lot for you to set up as well along with me. So first off we will create some virtual machines in AWS and set up the workbench. We will learn how we can install Ansible and test some basic features and we will also do some environment setup using Ansible inventory. So if you are ready let's begin. In the previous session, we discussed how we were able to minimize the workload of our DevOps team by using playbooks and Ansible, and they were able to install and deploy applications across multiple servers using the playbook. So to do this, what we need is we need to have an Ansible master, which obviously will be the working station of our DevOps team members, and from which we will try to control the servers where we need to perform the changes or install or deploy the application. And that is the biggest advantage of using Ansible that is because you don't have to install any agents on the target machines in order to make changes in them. You can just use SSH for Unix based machines and remote PowerShell for Windows machines. So here our testing environment will be setting up master node and two or three target nodes so that we can simulate a real time deployment scenario. And at the end of this series, we will deploy an actual application as well. So get ready for that. Now let's go ahead and create some virtual machines and install Ansible and let's have some fun. But before that, please make sure you have your AWS free tier account. I have given a link in the description on how you can create one for yourself if you don't have it so that you can make use of it and you can create your own EC2 instances. So if you don't have a free tier account, please go to the link in the description below and create your own free tier account and then you can create your own EC2 instances. So if you are new to AWS and if you haven't launched any instances before, then what you can do is you can just go to the console here. You will find services drop down. So you can just click on this and you can click on EC2 or you can just type here EC2. You will get EC2 virtual servers in the cloud. So you can just click on this as well. So once you have clicked this, you will get a dashboard for EC2. So this is the EC2 dashboard. So this is a place where all the magic happens when we consider the EC2 instances. And if you see here, we have the service health that is mentioned for the particular region. All servers are operating normally. So you're good to go. So you can just click on launch instance. And what we are going to do is we are going to launch three instances. So one will be the master node and the other two will be our target nodes isn't it so we'll choose amazon linux 2 that is free tier eligible and i'll select the x86 version just select that click on configure instance details so, so we can just choose the t2.micro that is because it is a free tier eligible one and then just click on configure instance details here you can just choose a default vpc and you can choose one of the subnets that you want and here you can just enable the public ip assignment that's it you don't have to do anything else just click on storage this is also fine just add tags so we are going to add a tag here so that will be name and this will be our ansible master then click on next so either you can create a separate security group so i've already created a separate security group for myself but that is simple it just allows port 22 so it's not a problem so you can just create one or you can just select an existing one so if you want to create one you can just give a name here and give a description here and you can just allow ssh for 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 and you can give a description as well so i'll go ahead and select the existing security group that i have and i'll just click on review and launch that is fine this is fine for me and just click on launch so here it is asking for us to select a key pair or we can create a new key pair as well so what we're going to do is we are going to just if you are new to this then you have to create a new key pair so if you click on create a new key pair you will be allowed to download that key pair but as i already have the key pair with me 
i'll be choosing the existing one so this is the one that i already have ec2.key and you have to acknowledge this so what it says is i acknowledge that i have the access to the selected private key ec2 key hyphen pem and that without this file i won't be able to log into my instance so please don't lose this key because this is really important because without this you will not be able to connect to the instance using ssh and this is one of the keys that is really important for us please don't miss out on this or please don't lose this otherwise you have to create all the instances anew isn't it so i will just acknowledge this and i'll just click on launch instance it's still not running so that is why it is not showing me in the list just give it a few minutes then it will come up so our new instance ansible master is ready and it is running now so you can click on this and you will see the public ip address that we have here and that is what we'll use to connect to this instance so once we have this we need two more instances isn't it so what we can do we can just right click on this and if i want to create a similar instance with this one then i can just go to images and templates and i can launch more like this just click on that that is fine just launch use the same key pair just click on launch a type and i'll do this once again because i need to so i'll just launch another instance So I'll change the names of this one. So this will be my target one. This target one and this is target two. Okay. So this is my master node and this is my target one and this is my target two. Now what we need to do is we need to connect to this instance, isn't it? So remember the place that you have stored your EC2 key pair. Okay. We'll be needing that. And before that, to connect to this instance, I want to install another tool that I wanted to use basically i've already installed that but i'll show you like how i have installed it so so this is the tool that i want you guys to use because i have been using it you can also use mobile xterm or putty it depends on you but actually this this i've been using it for a while now so and i felt like this is a very good tool so i just wanted to suggest you that if you feel like mobile xterm works fine for you then you can use that as well to install this, you can just go to the site https terminus.com. I'll be providing the link also in the description. And once you go there, you can choose one of the platforms that you are currently working on and just click on the, let's suppose I'm working on Windows, I'll just click on Windows and I'll download the exe. Okay, so once you've installed this, so once you've installed terminus, you will see this interface that you will be greeted with. Basically, what we can do here is we can create multiple connections or multiple SSH connections and we can save them as well so that is one of the best parts that i like so let's suppose i want to connect to a instance or ssh to a particular instance what i can just do is i can just click on new host and i'll just add a name here so it will be my ansible master and the address is so the ansible master just copy the public and just paste it so here next what you can do is you can just mention the username so username will be ec2 hyphen user and password is basically my key so i'll just iterate it if you want to add a key you can just click on plus key and you can just give it uh, ec2 hyphen key okay so there is no need to give a passphrase because we haven't provided any passphrases while creating the key itself so don't need that and just you can browse for the file so this is my key ec2 key hyphen pem i can just open that and i'll just i can just save it so you can do the same as well but i have already saved it so i won't do that once again so once you save it and you browse it you will get this option to select the key so you can just click on this and it will be chosen automatically and the next thing that you want to do is uh, you don't want to use a dark terminal theme i will just choose a basic one because it's very dark for you to see okay so no need to worry about this that's it you can just click on save so once you have saved it you can just double click on this one and add and connect that's it i'll just zoom it so this is our ansible master okay so here is the place where we are going to install our ansible isn't it so what is the thing that we need to do to install ansible 
we need to run a command okay so what it is sudo yum install ansible okay so what it is saying for amazon linux 2 we have a separate command that you need to run so that is sudo amazon linux extras because it is present in the extras library so you can just copy this you can just hold control shift c and you can just do a control shift v if you want to copy paste and now just press enter this is very simple to install ansible isn't it everything starts simple and it ends up being a mess but that's what we are trying to avoid isn't it so if you want to check whether the ansible has been installed or not then you can just do a ansible hyphen hyphen version so that you can see here we have already installed ansible 2.9.13 but now the main intention for us is to be able to connect to our target nodes using the ansible master that is what we are trying to achieve isn't that so for that as you already know that we have created ec2 instances and we connect to the ec2 instances using ssh using the ec2 key we have to have a set of keys here that we will use to connect to the ec2 instances okay so for that what you need to do is you need to copy the key that you already have with yourself in the desktop that you have and you have to create a copy here in the machine as well on the master node as well so that we can make use of it so what i will do is i'll go to the home folder and what i'll do i'll just create a ec2 key here ec2 key dot pem and what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the contents of my pem file and i'm going to paste it here okay so if you want to create file you need to use a vim command and vim space the file name that you want to create just press i once you have copied the contents of the key then just do a control shift v and once you have pasted it just press escape and colon wq that's it and now you have to change the permission of the file so ch mode 400 ec2 hyphen key dot pem that's it so just now we saw how we can create our ansible master and the target nodes but in real time you may not be working with only two or three servers isn't it you will be dealing with different services and a huge number of instances at once so for that we won't sit and type each command and wait for it to happen we will have to improvise isn't it so if you see here we have so if you see here we might have instances which belong to the web service deployment and a few other for the database the configurations will be different for both in most of the cases but we need to automate them in such a way that all the tasks that are targeted to be performed in the web servers should be a part of the list and the same goes with the database servers as well so imagine that your inventory looks like this so this is how the devops inventory might look like if you are using excel sheets to keep track of the instances so if you see here we have target 1 target 2 and target 5 with web servers and other two as a part of the db with different connection types and some using passwords and others using sh key and the benefit of using an inventory file is that you can keep all the targets that you have under one roof that is under one file and execute them as per your need same way we can see here if you see the inventory file that we have inside which we have categorized the targets with a definition within the square brackets that you see if you have used ini files before you might be aware of this syntax which we use to write the configuration files so here we have the web servers where we have target a.hello.com and target d.hello.com and for db servers we have target c.hello.com and target f.hello.com and if you want to perform any operation or ping to targets at web server then what you can do is you can just type this command by giving the tag name let's suppose we have here ansible space web servers that is the tag name hyphen m that is the module name so that is ping that we are going to use to ping the devices hyphen i the inventory file name or the path of the inventory file 
and the same goes for the DB servers as well. And if suppose you want to perform any tasks that are common for both, then what can I do? I can just keep a separate tag with a different name called common or anything that you want and add all the servers to that list that we have done with common here, isn't it? And I can execute the same command like ansible space common, which is my tag name, hyphen m, ping hyphen i inventory.txt. But along with this ping, what I can do? I can execute a playbook as well, isn't it? So I can perform each operation based on my tag and my inventory file, which will point to specific servers intended in the tag name. So let's suppose I want to perform any thing specific to web servers. I can give the tag name as web servers. And if I specify the inventory file, it will go to that particular inventory file and check all the servers name listed under that tag name. And it will execute the operations on those particular servers itself and not on others. I hope you got the point. So once we have this, what we have to do is we have to create an inventory file. So just like the way I showed you here on the way we can create the inventory files and we can store the data as a part of the inventory system that we have. So the same thing we'll do for the targets that we have created. So we will make sure we have the host name, we have the IP address, we have the username, the connection type that we want and the key from which we can connect to. Okay, so that is what we will create in the part of the inventory file and I'll show you how you can create one for yourself. And if you're doing this along with me, make sure you pause the video whenever you need and you can catch up with me whenever you want. So let's go back and create the inventory file. So go to the terminal once again and just do a ls here. So here we have ec 2 keypem file. But if I want to create an inventory file, I just need to do a vim and inventory. So there's the file name that I want to give. Then just create a text file inventory.txt and press enter and this is the blank slate that we have here is the place where we can create the inventory file so i'll just press i which will give me the insert mode and here i'll write my inventory details so the first one that i have is in ansible hyphen target hyphen one so this is my target one the host name paste ansible hyphen host is equal to so here I need to paste the IP address of my host name that is for the target one. So I'll go back and I'll copy the target one host name. So this is the public IP address that I have. I'll just copy this and I'll just paste it. And the same way, I'll just type the connection method. So ansible hyphen or connection. Which is equal to SSH and space and symbol underscore user is equal to ec2 hyphen user and the same way what i can do is i can just copy this and i can just paste it again and i can change the ip address that i have for the target to i'll just copy the public ip address of the target to and i'll just paste it here and i'll change the name of the host name as well and you can just click on escape okay so once we have created the inventory what we can do is we can just type ansible ansible space ansible hyphen target target hyphen one hyphen m ping so that is the ping module that we have so hyphen m we can provide the parameter for the module that we want so basically we want to ping to the particular instance so i can just type hyphen m space ping hyphen i this is basically the extension to provide the inventory file name. So my inventory file name is inventory.txt and I can just press enter. So here it is asking that, are you sure you want to continue connecting? So this is a manual authentication. So here there is a problem that we are not able to connect to the instance because the permission is denied. So you remember that we added the key here, but we have not assigned it to the SSH agent. So that is one of the things that you need to remember. Only copying the key here is not sufficient. You have to add it to the SSH agent as well. So for that, your command is SSH hyphen agent space bash. And what you need to do here, you need to just copy this file that you have. Copy EC2 
to this path ssh dot ssh and then what you need to do is ssh hyphen add you need to add it the path that we have dot ssh slash ec2 hyphen key so we need to add that to the ssh agent then just press enter so once you have successfully added it you will get the message here identity added and that is basically your key okay so once you have done this you can just again type the command isn't it i'll just copy this once again and i'll just paste it and just press enter so now you are able to connect to this one so here we have resolved one issue that is for the permission denied issue that is basically for your ec2 key or the connection key or the sh key and next one what we need to do is we need to connect to other instances isn't it so target two so let's connect to that just change this to two from one to two then just press enter so the problem here is it is always trying to connect using a manual intervention so if i just press no it will not be able to connect because the host key verification has failed so here the problem is that there is a setting that you need to make either you can do a export of export of ansible underscore host underscore key underscore checking equal to false you can make this as false so this is one thing that you can do or else what you can do is you can just go to you can do a cat i'll just show you one path that is that you have for the ansible so slash etc slash ansible slash ansible dot cfg so you can just go there and here you will have an entry as well this entry uncommenting this will disable sh host key checking so this you can disable it as well so what we're going to do we are just going to disable this in the configuration file so i'll just do a vim but as you need to do a sudo vim here don't worry this needs some root level permission so just do sudo vim slash etc slash ansible slash ansible dot cfg then just press enter just come down here and uh, what you can do is you can just press i and go to the insert mode and you can just delete this hash now just click on escape and colon wq that's it try running your command once again yes it is successfully connected but the most important thing that we wanted to do was having to work on multiple machines at the same time isn't it and just now as we already discussed we'll do some changes to the inventory file and we'll see the same being done here as well so vim inventory.ext what i can do is i can just give i can just give a name here so this will be my servers okay i'll just give this a name of servers let's see if you are able to execute the ping command on both of them by using this tag name just press on escape and just colon wq and just save it make some changes to the command so here what i'm going to do i'm just going to specify the tag name so what is the tag name that we have servers isn't it so we'll just type servers and we'll just hit enter yes you can see we are able to connect to both the instances at once and the same way even if you mention like 50 servers or anything it depends on you based on your requirement you will be able to connect to these or you will be able to make changes to these servers or the machines that you have and that is pretty interesting and pretty amazing isn't it the way we are able to automate things and that is what we have learned now and i want you to practice on this one and try as many uh, hit and trials as you want and if you have any doubts or if you are facing any problems then you can put them in the comment section below as well so mostly the problem i think people might face is due to the connection issues so if you face that or if you are not able to install ansible or anything that you have so any problems regarding that as well you can post them in the comment section below and we can discuss further on them and i'm sure that others who have found a resolution for your issue they will be also able to help you 
So let's end the session here and please watch the previous parts as well. The links are in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the session we had today. If you did, please like the video and please let me know by commenting on what you liked and what you didn't. What are the things that you would like to see in this series? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and please make sure that you press the bell notification icon to get updates of my videos. And if you wish to support my work, you can do that now by using PayPal, Instamojo or you can also become a member on Patreon. The links are in the description below. Or you can become a member of the channel as well by clicking on the join button that you can see right below there. So I'll meet you in the next session of Ansible. Until then, it's Pythonic signing off.